Hi, I'm Jacob Marcus, and today we're looking at case studies, uh, a module within the data and business analyst curriculum. And in this lesson, we're actually going to do an example of a case, uh, leveraging you know some of the skills and tools that we developed um, earlier in this in this um, foundational series. Um, so, starting out here, um, Ice Cream Co. is a mid-sized ice cream retailer in the Southeast region. You are working with the VP of Sales and Marketing to figure out why profitability is down 20% in the last year. So this case is pretty direct. Um, you know, sometimes you get a lot of extra information, but um, you might read this back uh, as you're going through the prompt and just kind of summarize here that profitability is down. Um, uh, clearly, there's kind of um, some negative trend here, and we're trying to investigate um, how we might be able to reverse that um, for this ice cream retailer. Um, you won't always be explicitly asked, but you know, here we're saying, how would you approach this business question? Um, and so this is your opportunity to ask clarifying questions. So I might ask, um, well, I'll just flip to this. So I might ask, uh, how have costs changed over the last year? And the purpose of that question is trying to break out profitability, right? I know that's related to revenue or costs or both, um, but this might help me narrow in on, on uh, my hypothesis. And then secondly, you know, what is the state of the competition? Um, have, have the you know, businesses declined across the board for ice cream or is this something that's uniquely impacting us? Um, and so hopefully you get an answer uh, from the interviewer. And uh, sometimes, you know, um, in the first case, costs are flat. That's a bit of a dead end, um, but we know that mostly what's happening here is probably revenue related then. So I uh, might ask more questions about that or expect that in the case. And then secondly here, um, there are three competitors. One of them has the new business model without retail locations. Uh, so it sounds a bit like a ghost kitchen or something like that. They partner with ride sharing to distribute product for a dollar delivery fee. Um, so that's a little bit extra information. And um, you know I understand that we might be focused more on revenue for the case and specifically looking at um, uh, you know, the competitive landscape and um kind of the the market share for these different competitors so um framework time how do we build a framework from here so again there's not one way uh hopefully you remember the last lesson but we have to do something so um let's start with just some buckets here um i would start with uh profitability because at the end of the day that is an important criteria for operating a business um, I would think about uh, the ice cream industry and understanding kind of the bigger trends there and maybe some of our um, internal capabilities or what's happening within um, Ice Cream Co. that's leading to all of this, right? Um, and I'm starting with the buckets because for time, it's better to have, you know, again, me see better to have multiple kind of exclusive buckets um, than you know going into a lot of details about profitability or something and not considering some of the wider potential drivers. Um, but now we'll go into detail. So within profitability, revenue, we know that that is um, kind of one of the key differences here. And uh, I know that this is composed of the number of units that we sell and the price of those units. So that's two pieces of important information to look into. Um, and then costs, we know they're flat, but um, maybe there's still a way that, uh, you know, are they above the industry standard? Can we reduce them? Um, and are they kind of, yeah, are they similar uh, to our competitors? So there's fixed and variable. Um, within the ice cream industry, so again, we kind of asked about it initially. We know there's a couple competitors, but I'd love to know more about the competitive landscape, how those companies operate, what are their share market share? Um, what about the customer preference? How is that changing? Are people moving towards frozen yogurt or um, you know uh, subscription models, right? That would be interesting. Um, and, and kind of more widely, what is the market moving towards? So market trends. Um, and you know, uh, are there supply chain constraints or things like that? Um, internally, and this is where it seems like whatever's happening is affecting Ice Cream Co. Um, it's not like an industry-wide movement from the initial information there. Um, how does our distribution work? Um, do we do any of this uh, kind of ride-sharing delivery? 
what about sales and marketing? That's always a good one, right? Um, are we getting our name out there? Maybe people don't even know we exist. Um, uh, and what is our competitive advantage? Like, you know, uh, it might not be distribution specific, but um, do we have specific partnerships or a unique flavor of ice cream or something like that? Um, and uh, maybe a little more about product development, right? So I can understand the life cycle if we do need to um, develop something new uh, or, or procure kind of a, a new flavor there. Um, so I would, um, and, and here's typed up so that you don't have to look at my handwriting any, any longer. Um, I, again, I would have uh, kind of focused on this revenue piece. Uh, and, and again, have a, having a high hypothesis is really helpful at this stage. So um, you might even just say like, I'm, I'm interested in revenue, um, given that costs have remained flat and understanding, um, you know, the competitive landscape, because uh, I can see that, you know, this new competitor seems to be taking market share and I want to understand who they're taking it from. Um, at that point, you might also propose a hypothesis of how you could reverse this. Um, not, you know, I, I wouldn't make it this five bullet list, but this is just an example of kind of multiple solutions. Um, I think, you know, we could introduce a new product maybe that gains interest. We could increase sales and marketing, anything from this framework, right? You could, you could probably increase um, and, uh, and, and have an explanation for how that would increase profitability. Um, so uh, cost cutting initiatives, like we mentioned. So there's a couple different areas there you could propose, um, but most likely, you know, the interviewer is going to come back and try to focus you in on, on where the case is headed. So um, for this one, it's a lot of information <laughs> um, and this might be shared or handed to you in person. Um, but again, you know, just kind of read through it and, and talk out loud. So, and keep your framework handy as you go through here and see, you know, if you still want to focus in on those areas. So looking at market, um, three main competitors. So we, we asked this, um, it seems like it's being provided again. Um, they've experienced similar declines. Okay, so this is affecting um, the whole industry. Uh, it seems like, or, or this new first mover is taking market share away from the three main competitors. There's a new ice cream company in town with similar prices product, but a new model. They do not have retail locations. Okay, so the customer pays an additional $1 pint for the delivery fee that goes directly to the ride sharing partner. So that's important because essentially that means, um, you know, it's not driving their revenue, uh, but it might be increasing the volume of their sales um, by having this distribution strategy. The company, so this is about Ice Cream Co., we know most of this, we're a major ice cream retailer in the Southeast, purchases ice cream from a distributor. Okay, so we only purchase from a distributor and sell at store locations. So that's something to keep in mind. That is a differentiating piece um, from this other successful competitor. And uh, we only sell prepackaged. Okay, so something about product maybe to consider there. Uh, revenue, revenue is down 20%. We already knew that. On average, each store sells 2,000 pints per month at a price of 625. Okay, so that's enough. P times Q, we could probably solve for revenue, but let's not just start multiplying numbers. Um, cost side, variable costs, and fixed costs. Okay. So this is, let's keep this handy somewhere. Um, and then the next question is actually to calculate the average monthly profit. Um, for each store. So, um, you know, you can flip back and forth between these slides. If it's helpful, pause this first and, and try to do it yourself. Um, but uh, let's um, let's write it out and, and do it together. So um, I would break it out first. We can think about the, um, uh, the contribution margin or basically um, for each unit that we sell, kind of how does that break down? Um, so we said, we can sell them at a price of six twenty-five, and they cost a dollar forty-five variable for each unit. So that is four eighty per pint. And I don't know if that's good or bad, right? <laughs> we'll we'll kind of develop that, but it seems reasonable. Um, monthly revenue. So that's going to be the contribution margin, which is four eighty, and this is the way I like to kind of go line by line bringing each number down, sanity checking it, and talking through any insights. Um, that's an arrow. So that's the 480 times how many pints, which we were told is, oh, not a dollar sign, but um, 2,000 pints of ice cream. So that's 9,600 in revenue per month per store. Um, and then again, that's you know speaking to the context of the case. 
Um, again, I don't know if that's good or bad. Seems reasonable for an ice cream store to be generating $10,000 in revenue. It's not billions, so it passes my sanity check. And what about the monthly profit? So that is the $9,600 of revenue that we just calculated minus the variable costs, uh, sorry, the fixed costs, um, which if you add those up and the monthly allocation, uh, so it's 5,000, so 5,000 for labor, 2,000 for rent, 1,000 for utilities, um, literally just adding those up, 9,500, that's $100 a month uh, in profit. So that doesn't seem like much. I guess my you know, first instinct is it is profitable. So that's worth calling out better than you know, running at a loss. Um, but that doesn't sound great to me. So something that I might calculate to help me draw some insight is uh, the um, specific, like the profit margin, um, which is profit divided by uh, revenue. And that's only about 1%. I mean, $10,000 $10, would be 1%. So the food industry is known for having um, uh, low margins, but that's really low. So I might, I might put a sad face there. Um, <laughs> because, uh, you know, again, if, if one of these uh, drivers change or variables or we have a tough month in sales, um, that could easily uh, become negative. So um, here are those calculations again in more detail. Um, and the point here is that, yeah, those the, even for the food industry, right, that's that's a pretty slim margin. Um, so the next question here is, how can Ice Cream Co. increase their margin? So again, you know, we could decrease costs, we could increase revenue, but let's get a little more specific um, and think through this. So um, the fixed costs are pretty high, right, the 9,500 here. So maybe there's something there that we could do. Uh, labor is 50% of that. So maybe less people in the stores or hiring lower skilled labor that we don't have to pay as much. That's one possible solution. Um, and again, this is just brainstorming. So anything that you feel like you can, you know, in the real world kind of explain some of these numbers, uh, this is your chance to do that. So another one is, uh, you know, lowering the price. So this 625, depending on the price sensitivity or price elasticity, right? Maybe we decrease that to $5, um, but then the pints that we sell will go up. So kind of understanding the relationship between those two. Um, however, you know, and this is where you can call out a risk, the margins are so small that that might be a little risky to start playing with that dynamic. Um, maybe another way is looking at value add opportunities, right? So um, kind of similar to the distribution uh, through ride sharing, uh, maybe we could start bundling in something else. Maybe there's like t-shirts or maybe some um, online uh, skins for a video game that might get some sales and increase WTP willingness to pay, right? Maybe someone's willing to pay seven dollars for a pint of ice cream if it's, uh, you know, um, made in a in a certain customized way or with a certain delivery time. So, um, those are kind of some initial thoughts on brainstorming. Um, but case isn't over. You never know. So here's another question, right? The ride sharing ice cream competitor also charges six twenty five a pint. So we're getting more information here. So they're actually pricing at parity with us. And they're charging a dollar on top of that, um, but they're considerably more profitable. So why would that be the case? Um, I, I, you know, and you got to think about a hypothesis here. Um, you, it could always be something else. Um, maybe their location is better, right? Um, maybe the initial hypothesis is just that there's a cost advantage, right? Um, our costs are flat, but clearly if they're more profitable, their margin must be larger. It's not running at 1%. Um, and so we could actually look into some of the different, you know, areas of, of fixed and variable costs that were provided to us and hypothesize which are different. Um, and some of those are called out here, right? So um, uh, maybe, you know, uh, we operate out of retail locations. So the rent is a lot more, maybe the labor is more expensive because we have to, you know, or we have to buy permits. Um, we need to have people in a more urban area, which uh, requires paying them more. Um, and, you know, thinking of the fixed costs, uh, you know, they're only selling via ride sharing. So there could be some big differences there. Um, you know, the way that they manage inventory might be entirely different. Uh, maybe they don't have to keep it on hand as often. They can just uh, pick it up from a distributor. Um, maybe the, uh, you know, the fees associated with the ride sharing partnership 
um, you know, that's, that's an increased area there. So understanding kind of the full range of impacts there. Um, but again, you know, this list could, could be very long. Um, so again, we are in the conclusion phase. So um, at this point, they might say, you know, oh, the CEO of Ice Cream Co. is coming over. Can you summarize what we did today real quick? Or, uh, you know, just ask you for a summary directly. And so I think these are four helpful areas um, to think through uh, during a summary. So um, starting out, right, uh, talk about what you did that day. So um, the summary is that, uh, you know, we evaluated the profit margin and cost structure of Ice Cream Co. relative to competitors. Um, after doing that, we recommend uh, that, you know, in order to compete with this new competitor who is using ride sharing, Ice Cream Co. must increase their margins, uh, either by reducing costs or finding ways to increase sales volume, maybe with bundling or something. And you can call out, you know, the data point. So uh, that's supported by the fact that each store is only making $100 in profit. So um, that's not sustainable. Maybe we need to close certain stores. Um, because uh, remember, this is an average. So um, maybe there are certain stores that aren't profitable and certain ones that are very profitable. Um, some of the risks here, um, you know, current fixed costs uh, might be under long-term contracts. So maybe we can't really touch some of those costs. Um, so we would need to investigate that. Um, other risks, uh, there might be other entrants to the market um, that might continue to steal market share. So we have to act quickly. Um, we might not have the luxury of kind of, uh, you know, uh, doing this in a, in a systematic way. So next steps, again, always helpful to call out. Let's deep dive the cost structure, see kind of what is controllable, um, which costs we can uh, you know, reduce and what those opportunities are. And let's collect store specific data. Um, and again, to understand and, and, and kind of justify which locations um, you know, we should uh, potentially shut down. So again, that's shooting for about a minute or two in the summary, you don't have to cover everything, um, but uh, you know, hopefully making kind of a compact, concise way of um, summarizing the full case uh, and and coming to that hypothesis that, or the conclusion at the end that you know the hypothesis of um, uh, revenue was actually not the right direction. We had to focus on costs, um, and so uh, that was an ice cream case. Um, we'll do a couple different industries. Um, so yeah, thanks for sticking with me, and I'll see you in the next lesson.